Greetings, traveler. I am Jarborius. If you're looking for wares, I have plenty to sell. I will also buy your wares, even if you just stole them from me. My son! My baby son, my boy! My baby son went missing in a really awesome cave nearby. Will you find him? Oh, heavens! Not the solution I expected, but I suppose that would do. Very well. He is so beautiful. Much better than my first. Thank you. I love you. And here I thought you would never ask. From the moment we first shared our gaze 30 seconds ago, I knew you were the one for me. How could this be? After all we've been through and you so easily cast me away like some putrid little plaything. Very well, you must leave now, this instant, for I have nothing left to say to you. Only the finest wares. NPCs, aka non-player characters, are exactly what they sound like. Any character that is not the player. It could be friend or foe or side quest giver, boy kisser, gun getter, sentient critter, kings and queens or a kitty cat's litter, car crash victim Keanu Reeves. The term NBC actually originates from the ancient tabletop game Dragon Dungeon, where the Dragon Master would have players interact and speak with imaginary non-player characters created, voiced, and controlled by the DM. But while these NPCs NPCs have an endless amount of interactions and potential responses thanks to the power of human brain, NPCs in video games present a really complex challenge for developers. Every single action performed by even the most insignificant NPC has to be designed and programmed and written and potentially voice acted and animated. When people pretend to be NPCs on TikTok, there's a reason they do super repetitive looping movements and only say like four different things over and over and over. But I think certain NPCs can be pretty interesting to talk about because video games have gotten pretty clever since the days of Grandma Zatari. Cool, a scorpion. All right, Grandma, let's, let's get you back into the dungeon. It could be as simple as knocking on a wall in Metal Gear Solid and the guard going, what was that noise? Which blew my mind as a precocious child. Or it could be as complex as cats vomiting everywhere in a tavern because they stepped in beer that spilled onto the floor and then groomed themselves and got alcohol poisoning because Dwarf Fortress is a full-on simulation of life inside the Garfield residence. Drew Garfield, that is, that's right. I get to call him Drew because we're buddies. I've divided my NPCs into three categories, but there will definitely be some crossover. Townsfolk, interactable VIPs, and enemies. Enemies are Scrooge, it's the holidays, baby. These are usually your bottom of the barrel NPC ass NPCs, talking about random people on the streets of Los Santos that are very easily angered and always wanna fight you for some reason. Copy paste townsfolk in Assassin's Creed that you're not supposed to kill, but you do it anyways, and the game is like, dude, Ezio wouldn't even do that, dude, stop. The general expectation with these NPCs is that even though your interaction is usually limited to just killing them in hilarious ways, you hope that they at least react appropriately to your heinous action. Whether this means running from explosions or gunfire, jumping to get out of the way of your car, T-posing in place and going, I'm not afraid! In a lot of games, townsfolk will only seem to exist wherever the player is and show like very little agency of their own. But Oblivion's radiant AI system said, F that, these geniuses have schedules and jobs and lives and important things to say that don't make a lick of fucking sense. Oblivion NPCs are often remembered and beloved and memed for the funny haha janky moments. Moments, but I'm bummed that Bethesda seemed to pump the brakes on the Radiant AI stuff after Oblivion because it can make for some really entertaining emergent gameplay. Unexpected things can happen and the varied routines and lives of each individual NPC can make the game world feel a bit more reactive and alive instead of every interaction feeling incredibly scripted. Speaking of scripted, Red Dead 2 has really great detailed NPCs where they'll actually like go to their job and then go get drunk and there's some level of interaction beyond just killing them because you can say hi or fuck off or rob them, even if none of it actually affects the design of the linear, boring-ass missions. What the fuck? Who said that? Shh, get out of my dojo. Watch Dogs Legion said, okay gamers, you can play as any NPC in this game and we're gonna give them jobs and skills that you can take advantage of. And even though the execution of each simulated NPC's life ended up being a bit 
shallow. I think it's a really interesting twist on the traditional background NPC. In games like Majora's Mask or Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing or The Sims, each citizen is like an actual independent person that does not give a rat's ass if they inconvenience the player. It is up to you to cater to the NPC schedules, not the other way around, which I think would be pretty immersive, but also, it is the middle of the day. Why are you not at your store? NPCs having actual names and some level of interaction is a great segue into the next part of the video. Oh my God, NPC this, NPC that. He's looking like a QPC, quarter pounder with cheese. Hi, I'm Jakey. Jakey. And Jakey. Attorneys, Attorneys at law. law. I'm a very busy lawyer guy. And the other day I wasted precious hours of my time just trying to cancel recurring monthly charges and it sucked and I hated it. Do you hate canceling stuff too? Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. I'm using Rocket Money to identify and cancel those monthly recurring subscriptions without ever having to get on a phone call, which is great because I don't remember how to do that. What are you? Rocket Money helps me monitor my credit score and see important changes and insights on ways I can improve it. I also use Rocket Money to set up smart savings, which can automatically deposit a specified amount however frequently I want, which is great because I am trying to save up for another suit. All three of us wear the same suit and it's really stinky. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money today. We've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash nakyjakey or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash nakyjakey to get started for free. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Now let's see what other side quest quarter pounder with cheese over here has cooked up for us, you little beefcake. F off. These interactive freaks are a tier above your generic background actor. I'm talking your talk to me exclamation point above my head looking asses. You know, characters with clearly better graphics, quest givers, merchants, companions that offer you hints to puzzles that you didn't even ask for. F off, mate. I bloody know what I'm doing. A lot of the time you have to annoyingly wait for them to stop talking and then follow them to some destination to advance a quest. And usually they're walking at a speed that is neither your walk or sprint speed. So it's really frustrating to try to match their pace. This is a direct shout out to Bethesda. It is 2023. Why are we still doing this, Todd? A good interactable NPC has stuff like unique and memorable character design, consistent and thoughtful writing that doesn't sound like a 15 year old wrote it, a convincing performance that is believable or at the very least entertaining. Merchant from Resident Evil 4, Voss from Far Cry 3, Wheatley from Portal 2, that fucking cat dude that lies to you in Skyrim. Everyone and everything you interact with in Undertale. Um, can I get Toad on the screen. The entirety of Baldur's Gate 3, which probably has the best NPCs and companions of any game in the world of all time. The amount of times that this game actually takes into account the choices you've made, the relationships you've nurtured, the people in your party, the fucking items in your inventory. I feel like every person has a story about some time an NPC did something they didn't expect and surprised them. And I think those are some of like the best moments in gaming because they make the game world feel alive. Some of you might roll your eyes at this next example, and I totally get it, but I just still think about it all the time. In The Last of Us Part 2, NPC enemies who are actually really smart, they'll sometimes be put in a down state where they'll like beg and plead for their life and be like, no, don't do it. And if you do any interaction other than kill them, aka walk away and do nothing, they will eventually magically stand back up and go right back to shooting you. Because as smart as the AI is in this game, they only possess one potential end goal. Kill. This might be the most common type of NPC because they are a tale as old as time, jail as old as grandma who keeps letting you out, you cool bag of beans. Red dot on the map that wants to kill you. Goomba that wants to kill you. Doggies that want to give you a little kiss and then go <laughs> Good enemy design is dependent on so many potential factors. The shape, the size, the speed, the sounds, the, the color and scent of their blood. Is it green? I don't know. But I think a common trait shared among good video game enemies is a common competent level of artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's just a question of how good of a magician the AI is. Halo's pioneered use of behavior trees for its fantastic ensemble of enemies makes the same 30 seconds of gameplay fun to repeat over and over because it's never gonna play out the same way. Fear's enemies pioneered the use of goal-oriented action planning to give the very convincing illusion that this squad is smartly and tactically working together to aggressively pursue your little scared ass. Starfield's enemies use emoji scripting and just stand around 
down waiting for you to shoot them like a carnival shooting gallery mini game. I'm sorry, but god damn it. It's 2023 and there are games from the 90s whose enemies are still running marathons around these guys. That, that pun is intended. Most of this stuff is above my pay grade, but if you're interested in learning about it, there's some really great videos by AI and Games and Game Makers Toolkit that I'll put down in the description. I love enemies that will evolve and adapt to your actions and not just do the same predictable thing over and over again. Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War have some of the best enemies that can actually make even dying fun, thanks to the Nemesis system. Not only will orcs adapt to certain actions if you do them too much, but they will remember who you killed and how you killed them and help you create these amazing little narratives within the game. It's a shame that Warner Bros. patented the Nemesis system because having an interactable hierarchy of enemies is such a fantastic concept. A big thing tying into good enemy design is difficulty, and unfortunately not all games approach increasing the difficulty with the same level of care. As much as I love some Bethesda games, they've always done the dumbass thing where increasing the difficulty doesn't actually change any AI behavior, but it just doubles their health and gives them more damage output. So now, instead of a mindless shooting gallery where you just go up and shoot people, you hide behind something and chip away at a bullet sponge for like 30 minutes, which isn't exactly my idea of fun. I'm sorry I keep talking about Starfield, clearly. I have a lot to say about it. But I think a game like Ghost of Tsushima approaches increasing the difficulty in a much more interesting way where the enemies will actually become more aggressive and even though now they kill you in like two hits, you also kill them in like two hits. So it becomes this beautiful dance of passion and gamer precision focus. I don't know. Play it on lethal. It's the best way to play that game. I think we all know that the eventual future for NPC AI is AI. The implementation of shit like ChatGPT in existing games with mods is already super impressive and honestly really scary. But I could totally see AI becoming a super valuable tool within the toolkit used to create meaningful and interesting game worlds. It could make games a bit closer to having that limitless human brain dungeon master powering your interaction with NPCs. I just hope we don't let AI become the death of meaningful and creative game experiences and just get completely procedurally generated ass creed games like every two hours. If you want more NPC centric content, I highly recommend checking out any Austin's videos where he does some investigative cyber journalism to discern the unemployment rate in Skyrim cities. I really love his videos. I don't know him, but I think he has a really unique voice that stands out among the sea of YouTube gamers. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video and I'll see you next time.